Hey guys, Jim here from Budget RC, and today I'm going to show you how to build the brightest light bar on the trail for about 10 bucks. So stick around. Okay guys, so the parts that you're going to need will really vary depending on specifically how you decide to build this. But no matter how you go about it, ultimately what you'll need is the LED light bar itself, some sort of a housing, and then some sort of a method to mount it to your vehicle. Here you can see that I've got a couple of different LED light bars and a couple of corresponding housings. Now this first LED light bar is this large one here. This one's advertised as a daytime running light. You can find them on eBay for about five or six dollars a pair. These are nice because they already come pre-wired and they're already designed to run off of 12 volts. I also wanted to try the smaller LED because it's quite a bit cheaper and I liked the smaller form factor better. This LED was only about a dollar or two and it's available at places like GearBest or even on eBay and, and so forth. You have some options in terms of specifically how you want to go about building this. You can make it very simple and just take something like this light here which already has an adhesive backing on it and mount it directly to your vehicle if you choose or you can get something like an angled aluminum bracket mount the aluminum bracket to the roof of your vehicle and then mount this directly to that bracket. It's a cheap option, it's simple, and you'll be on the trail in no time. I wanted to do something that looked a little bit more professional, a little bit more like a, I guess a traditional light bar. So what I decided to do was go with this aluminum C channel that you can pick up at your local hardware store. This is a piece of half inch channel made for this larger one here, and this is a piece of 3 8 channel that I intend to use on this smaller light bar. Now right out of the box, this light bar here won't fit into the half inch channel. It's a little bit too big. So what you need to do is remove this double back tape from the back of it here and remove this black aluminum housing. And you do that just by pulling up the tabs that are wrapped around the back of it. Once you do that, this is what you end up with. And you can see that this is just a basic light bar like the smaller one below. Now even when you get it to this point, it still won't quite fit into that aluminum channel. So what you need to do is just sand a little bit off of the top and the bottom just to make it a little bit thinner. And I did that on my bench sander because it's a nice flat surface. If you don't have one of those, you can use a file or you can even tape some sandpaper down to your desk. Once you do that, you'll see it slides right into that half inch channel perfectly. It was pretty much the same procedure for the smaller one. This is a 10 millimeter high light bar and I found that it was just a little bit too big to fit inside of the 3 8 channel. So what I had to do again was sand top and bottom and once you do that it fits right in. So the first thing you're going to want to do if you've got this plain style bar is go ahead and solder your wires to it. You can see that there's some solder pads right here and you want to use your wire. In my case I used a 22 gauge wire. Strip back just a very tiny amount of the wire, maybe an eighth of an inch. Tin it and then solder it right to these posts here. You can see that I did the same thing on this larger bar. You want to make sure that when you solder this too, that you don't strip the wires back too far. If you have the bare wire touching the aluminum, you could cause a short. So make sure that there's enough wire to insulate it from the aluminum backing. So once you have your wire soldered to your light, the next step is to make sure that you've got your plug on the other end. Now, you can either buy a wire that's already got the JST plug or any other plug of your choosing. In my case, I like to make my own. Not only does it save money, but it adds a lot of flexibility. And you're doing so much wiring on RC cars, it's just a good idea to be able to do this anyway. In order to do this, what you do are to buy these JST plugs and the pins in bulk. And you use a crimp tool just like this one here that I got from Hobby King to crimp these pins onto the end of the wire, and then they lock right into the end of the connector. And the reason I wanted to have this type of a connector is that I want to be able to have the versatility to plug and unplug this bar, maybe change something later, and also it gives me the flexibility to choose my power source. These lights need 3S to run, but I run my Gen 7 on 2S. So by doing it this way, I can plug it into an auxiliary battery that's in the back of the vehicle for now. Down the road, my plan is to wire up a boost converter to bring the 2S voltage up to 12 volts. And I'll show you guys how to do that in a future video. By having the plug on here, it gives me that flexibility to make those types of changes. I also want to run a switch through this eventually so that I can switch the light bar on and off, just like I did with my bomber. 
The great thing about these crimpers is that you can also use them to make your own servo style cables. So it's just a good idea to have one of these around. So the next thing that you're going to need is some sort of a way to mount it to your vehicle. And I've got a couple of do-it-yourself options that I came up with here, starting with some parts that you may already have. This is a piece of that larger C-channel that I just cut one section off of, and then you can use to mount to your vehicle. Now this is a pretty simple approach, but it should be pretty effective once you make the insert for in here. And the beauty of making that insert is it kind of serves two purposes. It holds the light bar in place and allows you to have something to mount to. So this is a quick, a pretty quick option. You can make that insert out of almost anything. You can use, if you've got some Kydex or some ABS around, if not, you can grab a piece of cutting board. Um, you, can use, you can use almost any kind of plastic, just as long as it's thick enough. Likewise, you can try using some pre-made angle brackets. I picked up a four-pack of these at Walmart for about a dollar and a half. And this will work pretty much the same way as that cut-down C-channel. You can just mount it just like this and then mount it right to the top of your vehicle. Or you can even move it in like so. One thing you want to notice here is that you do have this big hole here, which is going to be too big for any sort of a small screw you want to use to mount to. So you'll have to cut it right below here and then just use this section. Um, again, you'll still need that insert for inside the C-channel. So another option is to make a piece out of some sort of plastic. In this case, I used Kydex. If you've seen my previous videos, you know I'm a big fan of using Kydex for custom parts, and this was no exception. Now my Kydex is an eighth of an inch thick, so I started with two pieces, I glued them together, and I made this internal piece, like I had mentioned previously, that holds the light bar into place and also serves as a mounting point for the side piece. Once I made one of those for each side, then I made this outer piece. And with this outer piece, it's important to make sure that both sides are the same. So I made, so I cut out two pieces and I shaped them together so that they're the same shape and size. And then when it came time to heat them to bend the plastic, I also made sure I did that together. I mounted both pieces into my vise just like this so that they were the same height. When I applied the heat, I made sure to apply it evenly right across, and I used a bigger block of wood to bend them together so that they're the same height. And this will allow you to mount your light bar right to your roof for a nice looking installation. The only thing left to do here is to drill the holes in the bottom of this to attach to the roof of your vehicle, and to drill a couple of holes through here to mount this piece to the aluminum channel. One other thing you want to make sure that you do is so if we turn to the back side here, as you can see that this piece doesn't sit quite flush. What you need to do is make sure that you make a notch in the back of your aluminum so that your wires have a place to go. I replaced the wires on my light bar with some thicker ones, so in my case it doesn't go quite far enough. But all you need to do is take that notch and just make it a little bit deeper. And so. As well as this piece here will work, I wanted to be able to do something that looked just a little bit more professional. And since I have a 3D printer, what I decided to do was take this idea and use 3D CAD to build something that I could print. And this is what I came up with. And you can see that this looks pretty much the same, except it's just a whole lot nicer. And these work in exactly the same way. And these provide a real nice fit and a real nice finish. And as I continued to work, I came up with some new revisions of this, and I've got them all linked below to my Thingiverse page, where you can download all of them for free. Print them out yourself and go ahead and use it. But of course, if you don't have a 3D printer, you can still use one of the options I showed before. So my final design that I came up with was an evolution of the one I just showed you. And in my final design, I actually made the two pieces separate, and I put a little bit of a swivel mount in here so that I can adjust the height of the light bar. So now I'm going to take you through the process of installing this into the aluminum C-channel. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is drill your holes into your aluminum C-channel that are going to be used to retain that block. Now it's very important for those holes to be properly spaced because you've got these larger M3 screws holding these two pieces together. Because it's so important to ensure that that's in the right spot, what you're going to want to do is build some sort of a template that will allow you to be consistent with your with your screws. 
if you've got your 3D printer and you're going to use one of my 3D printed designs, I've also got this piece here that I made specifically to do this. So you can print that out as well. And this will allow you to put that piece right on here. Go ahead and put it into your vise so that it's nice and sturdy. And then you can drill your back hole. Then you bring it to the bottom side if you're using one of the removable pieces or just the top side if you're using one of the rigid ones. And then you can just flip the piece over and do the same on the other side. You're going to want to use a 1 16th of an inch drill bit. After you drill it, what you're going to want to do is put your light bar in, put these pieces back in, and then go ahead and drill about four millimeters down through the holes that you just created in the bar. That'll transfer the holes to this piece. Then you want to take one of your M2 screws and just run it into here and back out. That'll create your threads and it'll clean out the junk. Once you do that, you want to come back to your aluminum channel, drill these holes a little bit bigger. I used a 5 64th drill bit in order to clearance it just enough for the M2 screw to fit. Next, if you're using a countersunk screw, now's the time to take your countersink bit to countersink that hole. And make sure you go slow because if you didn't go quite far enough, you can just go a little bit further. Once you went too far, you're beat. So once you have all four of your screw holes drilled and clearanced and countersunk if you're using a countersink bit, now you can go ahead and install those blocks and drive the four screws in. And now everything will be held in very well. Okay, so now you can just take your end pieces and put them on. And now you're ready to transfer the holes to the body. Now to transfer the holes into the body, what I did was fully assemble the light bar and I put some tape right over this section of the mount. I put the light bar exactly where I wanted to position it and then I used the tape to make sure that these mounts stayed put. I then took apart the rest of the light bar and was able to drill right through this, right through the tape, to transfer the holes into the body. One more thing to remember is that you also need a hole for your wire. And in my case, I have a JST plug on the end of the wire, so I needed to have a little bit larger hole. So you can see that right here. And I made the hole a little bit too small and then decided to elongate it just so I didn't have any more hole than necessary. And you'll see the reason that I chose this position here is that the mount itself actually covers most of the hole just so it doesn't stick out. Once you've got all your holes cut, now you can just use a couple of M3 screws with nuts on the back side to mount it to your body. So now here we are under the body, and you can see that we've got the M3 nuts on this side holding it securely so that now everything is fully installed and you can even adjust your light. Now it's just a matter of plugging it in and going to use it. So there it is, now you're ready to go. The only thing I've got left to do to this is to put some black paint on it just to make it look a little bit more subdued but you could even leave it like this if you like the look. Now what I want to do is give you guys a brightness comparison. I want to compare this one to that larger daytime running light and I'll compare both of them to the one too many RC's light that I installed on my bomber. Okay so right now I have the larger light bar just taped in place above the one that's installed on the vehicle. And what I'll do is plug them both in so that you can get a comparison. We'll start with the larger light bar. And you can see it lights up the wall pretty well. Now we'll go to the other light bar and you can see the difference. And you can see that this one is substantially brighter, which is why I ended up going with this light bar instead of the larger one. So now I'll show you the smaller light bar compared to the one on the bomber. Okay, so now we've got the bomber here with the one too many RC's light bar on the right and we've got the new light bar that we just built on the left. So first I'll show you the one too many RC's bar. And again you can see it lights up the wall pretty well. Now I'll go ahead and show you the new bar. And I think you can see this new bar is quite a bit brighter than that one too many RC's. And that one too many RC's has a reputation for being one of the brightest light bars out on the trail. So for this new one to be even brighter really impressed me. So now I'm going to turn them around so you can get a front hand view. Okay, so here we are turned around. So I'm sure this is going to blind the camera, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyway. I still think you'll be able to see the big difference. There's the one too many RC's bar. And there's the new bar. And I think even this way you can see that this new bar is just a whole lot brighter. So now I'm going to show you some running footage that I took last night 
to show you just how effective this is at lighting up the area in front of the truck. Well guys, here it is. It's all painted up and installed and I couldn't be happier with how it came out. I hope you guys learned something watching this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you'll always know exactly when my new videos are coming out. Until the next time guys, thanks.